Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. So Kant here. So today we will be learning about the difference between JAX and NumPy. And I will be showcasing how we can write a neural network code with the help of JAX. So now before we are getting into it, let's try to understand what is this JAX and what is this NumPy library. We all are pretty much aware of NumPy library. So as you are learning data science, you try to use NumPy to perform scalar operation or vector operation. You create 1D array, 2D array, you try to create a 3D array, you try to perform eigenvalues, eigenvectors. So you try to perform inverse matrix. All this we are able to do it with the help of NumPy. Now we can call NumPy falls into a category of what? A numerical purpose computa computing library. So we are able to use NumPy for simple numerical computing purpose. Now the same thing cannot be done. So I cannot use NumPy and I can I cannot build a highly efficient deep learning models, especially like LLM models or a computer vision models or natural language understanding models or image generation models. We cannot build it by using so my NumPy library or if I want to use or I want to come up with new research on deep learning algorithms. So now even I cannot develop that entire mathematical equations from scratch using NumPy. So I can write a code but still it may not be at that performance. For that reason Google developed this particular library called as JAX. Where exactly we can say just X, J stands for your just-in-time compilation and where exactly A stands for auto differentiation or we can say autograd and then where exactly A stands for acceleration. So this is the simple full form of your JAX library. So by using JAX, we are able to have a better control on the way you write your neural network models or we can say deep learning models. So now why? Uh, means like Google kind of companies, they're investing on JAX. Very simple. Now deep learning is not really like a machine learning. Now if you take a machine learning models, so there is a very simple equation, let's say like entropy. And they try to, whatever the data you have it, they compute entropy value and they are able to learn it. They are able to get that uh, entropy value close to zero. We are able to say it as a leap. If the entropy is greater than zero, we are able to say it as a node. In this way, there are fixed equation in your uh, machine learning. But in deep learning, your neural networks try to learn every approach, means whether it is image recognition or it can be a transformer model or LLM, they try to learn it with the help of a concept called as backpropagation. So what is this backpropagation as this equation is called as a backpropagation equation. Now the goal of any deep learning model is to have a least amount of loss. So in order to achieve the least amount of loss, so now if you take a very simple uh, means like a deep learning algorithm equation, so there is act y equal to output parameter equal to activation function into weight into your input parameter plus your bias value. Now the change in your output parameter, the predicted value is purely dependent on your weight value and your bias value. So in order to get that W value and a B value, until the loss value is minimum, we keep on changing the W value and we want to keep on changing your B value. So in order to do that, we are trying to use this equation called as backpropagation equation, which is change in loss based on change in weight. In order to achieve this change in loss based on change in weight, so we are trying to go with this particular equation called as your chain rule. So now we are trying to go to the sequence of your node nodes within your neural network by going to the sequence of nodes. So what are the sequence of nodes? I don't want to touch all this right now, but uh, this is how the sequence of nodes going to happen. These are the sequence of nodes. So in order to achieve my change in loss, so now this is my change in loss. So in order to calculate my change in loss, I cannot directly calculate the change in loss based on change in weight. So in order to do that, first I'm calculating change in loss based on change in output. And then in, in order to calculate change in output, so now we are going with change in output input. And then in order to calculate this, we are going with change in output input by change in W. End of the day, everything gets cancelled and you are able to get change in loss based on change in weight. So now that is another different concept. So we call back propagation. In order to do this, PyTorch people came up with a concept called as autograph. 
So auto differentiation. Now the same concept we are able to find it in JAX, so which is uh, our uh, JAX library. Now these are the differences. So now JAX is optimized, especially for machine learning, but then saying machine learning, I want to say it as deep learning. It is primarily optimized for deep learning and for scientific computation, whereas NumPy is a general linear algebraic library, we can say that. And whereas it supports auto differentiation, as I said right now, and it, there is no support for, for auto differentiation. So now there are specific libraries in JAX, means within your JAX library, there are sub modules like grad and there is a module like your V map called as vectorization. We are able to do this with the help of JAX library. Now, even if you see the code here, now I'm trying to import. So now let me, Yeah, if you see this, I'm from uh, I'm just going to my JAX library dot numpy. I'm importing np, and uh, I'm going to JAX dot random as random, and I'm from JAX. I'm importing the sub modules like grad and shit. So now we will be using them to build a simple neural network. Now it supports my uh, auto differentiation, and uh, there is no support for auto differentiation, and uh, you are. Um, JAX library supports GPU and TPU execution out of the box. So now why you need to have a GPU and your TPU for the sake of acceleration in order to make your training to run. So at an accelerated speed, you want to perform GPU computing and TPU computing for your especially deep learning models and uh, often faster for a large scale computation because of accelerated linear algebra and suitable for smaller tasks. For example, if I want to build a bigger models, yes, I think NumPy may not be suitable, but whereas JAX is going to help me. And one more difference is your JAX is going to have an immutable data. So now all your data within JAX is an immutable data, whereas in your NumPy, it's a mutable array. Now, if you see the simple code, now I'm doing the same thing. So from NumPy, I'm trying to, um, I'm importing NumPy library. I created an array. And after that, I'm just trying to change. So the index position one with value 20. And when I'm trying to print the value X, we are able to change it. But the same code, if I'm trying to run it with the help of my JAX, I want to create it with a JAX library. Now, if you see, I'm calling JAX. So now here NP is called as, so if go to JAX and from that go to NumPy and import NP library. And if you are able to see here, now I'm just trying to call NP.array123. And if I'm trying to change the value, so now in simple, if I want to change the value, I can simply say X of one. So we are able to get the index position two. When I just said X of one, I'm able to get my index position two, which is array two. Now I'm trying to change that value with the 20, then it's going to throw me with an error. It's going to throw me with an error stating that, hey man, Jack's arrays are immutable and does not support in place item assignment. So now the same array, you cannot replace the value once you create it. So for that reason, what we are doing is, I'm just trying to call, so now go to this particular array X here, you're able to see, I go to this particular array called X at a position one and set that position one to 20 and store it into a new immutable array. So that's what you're doing. So now whereas your JAX supports immutable arrays like your tuples and whereas your NumPy is going to support mutable arrays. Now let's try to see, I'm trying to build a simple uh, neural network. If you look into the code here, now this kind of code which I'm writing here, we are able to see the similar kind of code. If, if anyone used TensorFlow, the older versions, means TensorFlow version one. If you are able to see anything of TensorFlow version one, we are able to follow this kind of approach. Normally the regular TensorFlow 2 is a pretty much high level library. Means what do you mean by high level is, you don't need to define anything. Just you need to call the library, you call the data, you call a sequential layer, you try to feed it everything it's going to run. But here you are defining, for example, if the size of your input increases, the number of your weight parameters and bias parameters increases. So now we are defining the model architecture. If you look here, I'm defining the weight and I'm defining the bias, another weight, another bias. So we are calling them as parameters. And then 
I'm trying to define my hidden layer, so which is a tan H activation I'm using internally. So I want to multiply W with respect to your input parameter plus bias. And for that, we are adding an activation called as tan H. We know the tan, tan H activation ranges from minus one to plus one. So that's going to be your hidden. From the hidden, in order to get to the output, again, you got a dot product, hidden layer, to the output parameter, sorry, the weight plus bias, and you are not adding any activation function at your output layer. So normally, if you are trying to do classification, you need to add a sigmoid activation, or you need to add your uh, what is that uh, softmax activation. But if you are trying to build a regression model, you no need to add any activation at your output parameter. So that's what we are doing here. And then we are returning the output parameter. And after defining the model architecture, then the neural network building blocks, are, you need to have a model architecture and then you need to have a loss function. So we are defining the loss function. So the loss function in simple is like you are trying to provide your weight parameters and your input parameter that going to be your model and you are trying to get the predicted results and the difference between the actual Y minus predicted, we call it as loss which is nothing but mean squared error. We are writing all this code with the help of JAX. We are not writing using NumPy. It is everything written using JAX. And then once you define your loss function, then you need to initialize your weight parameters and the bias parameters. So in, in order to initialize your weight parameters and your uh, bias parameters, we are trying to do the same thing. We are initializing weight. So which going to be the weight, whatever the weight value you are trying to pick for the very first time, you can pick it at a normal distribution range. And again, the same thing you are saying bias. So for a bias value, you are saying the bias value need to be zero. Practically, uh, defining bias zero make gonna make your model more overfitted. We should not do that approach, but uh, this simply I have done it in order to have a lesser amount of training time where exactly we set the bias value as zero. But basically, when you are setting bias value to zero, your model turned to be more under overfitted. And then we initialize our weight value and the bias value so that we are able to get our weight value, bias value at two different layers at the hidden layer as well as at the output layer, we are able to get it. After that, we are trying to feed the training data. Here we are trying to feed our X train data, Y train data, that's what we feed to our algorithm. And then we got our learning rate, number of epochs, hidden dimensions. So these are just variables. And after defining that, now I'm trying to give my parameters and then I want to run this particular for loop. So now here you can see, initialize the parameters, input dimension, hidden dimension, output dimension, and now you are trying to create a grad loss. So now the goal of your, uh, what is that? Just-in-time compilation. So now you are using JIT stands for just-in-time compilation. The purpose of your grad is now until the loss value is minimum. So until the loss value is minimum, your gradient descent or your differentiation need to keep on happen. So now how many times if you look into the epochs, so now until the loss value is minimum, I want to iterate it for a thousand times. So at a speed of 0 0.1. Now even the speed, the learning rate also differentiates or the learning rate also helps us to get a quality learning. Now if you are increasing the learning rate the quality of your, uh, what is that, loss value increases. Now, in order to get the least amount of loss, you want to optimize your learning rate, you want to optimize your epochs, you want to optimize your batch size. So these are the three important elements. We will be learning them. I think um, I'm planning to start the deep learning series. There you will be learning more about it. And then finally, so now we are using this just-in-time compilation and I want to minimize the loss. So the loss function going to be this one. So this is my uh, loss function. Until this loss value is zero or until the loss value is minimum, we are keep on minimizing it with the help of the autograd function grad and with the help of just-in-time compilation. And then we are running the for loop. So now this is my for loop. So now I'm running the for loop for so thousand times and we want to print every hundredth step. I want to print the loss. So this is what we are doing. So this entire code, the same code. If anyone are from TensorFlow 1, they can easily understand this code. 
So now if anyone are new to NumPy and are new to data science or new to Python, understanding this JAX may find it a bit difficult. So why? If you understand the neural network architecture, if you understand how the mat matrix multiplication happens, how exactly you get an output vector, if you can understand all this, then this, going, this code going to be very easy. Now JAX is playing a very crucial role for the researchers. So people who want to, now basically deep learning researchers, they try to come up with different mathematical equations from physics and they are trying to understand the biology so like they are understanding biology better and they are pulling out the equations from physics and they are trying to come up with new new uh, advancements in the field of AI so we under even we can say deep learning. Now, in order to do that, I think you cannot rely on TensorFlow. Why in a TensorFlow you have your high level API. Now, if I want to have a control over every mathematical equation and every multiplication I'm doing, I think JAX is one of the best platform. So now most of the companies right now, especially who are working on research, especially they are relying on the JAX library. So people who are interested to explore it on the weekend, please do this. So like it's very interesting. So having a JAX knowledge, so going to demo demonstrate that you are having a solid knowledge on deep learning. So why? So in order to write a code on deep learning using TensorFlow, it's very easy. Now the same code, if I want to write it using JAX, it, it demands a lot of theory. It demands a lot of math. So if I ask someone, hey, what exactly weight? They don't know. But here the weight is the random value. What is your bias value? You can say, hey, it's the value of zero. Now, or I can change it into truncated normal, or I can change it into normal. So you have a complete granular control over what you are doing. So now, and as I said, the difference between JAX and NumPy, explore it, give a try of it, and share your uh, views in the comment section. If you want more videos like this, please share your opinions in the chat. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please do subscribe. Thank you.